Hi everyone, it's Tox from CritTappen.com. Thanks for watching and welcome back. Before we get into our critical play, we'll tell you a little bit more about our critical wall. So we have a new addition and it's a really cool story. We had a fan that sent us a note telling us that Marvel Legendary got his wife to start playing games with him. Uh, she hadn't been interested in it before. She was uh, obviously drawn to Marvel Legendary from its artwork and some of the uniqueness to it. And that game has now got them in a very happy relationship playing tabletop games, which I think is really cool. So I took that, I sent a note off to Jason Brenner, who's the lead at Upper Deck Entertainment, told him the story, shared it with him, and he came through with this. The fan thought it would be really cool to have something on the wall for Marvel Legendary, maybe an oversized Scheme Twist card or something like that. Jason came through really big. This is an oversized Berserker Rage Wolverine, which is the rare version of Wolverine in the game if you're familiar with it. He is eight, uh, eight points to recruit. He says draw three cards and if you've played an instinct hero this turn, you get an additional plus one fight for each extra card you've drawn this turn. Not just those three, but each extra card you've drawn this turn. And if you're familiar with the game, there's a lot of card drawing, especially from Wolverine, so a lot of fight could come out of that card. It's really cool, and this is the exact reason that I wanted to do the Critical Wall. It's a way for you guys, the fans, to have something up here that represents you and what you love about tabletop gaming. And I want to thank the fan that gave us the story and the idea. Definitely want to thank Jason and Upper Deck for helping us out with that, and it's really coming together quite nicely. If you're not familiar with the project, we'll put a link in here to the video to let you know what it's about. So if you still have ideas, there's still a lot more space up here, and as it gets wider and wider, we're probably going to have to get a panoramic camera, so we'll see how that goes. But let us know your ideas. If you have things you'd like to send us put up there, let us know and we'll uh, get in contact and see what we can do. But why are we here? Well. Last week we did a critical play of the DC deck building game from Cryptozoic. We had a lot of fun, we hope that you enjoyed it, we got a lot of good conversations going on that and it's been really, really good. This week we're going to contrast that with the Lord of the Rings deck building game from Cryptozoic. Now this is also built on the Cerberus engine. This is not out yet, it's not in stores. We have a copy of it that was provided to us by Cryptozoic. We did already do a critical review on this. If you haven't seen that, we'll put a link either here or here, or maybe both. It is a crit of a game. It is a lot of fun. Thematically, it connects really, really well. And hopefully, during the course of this gameplay, you'll see some of the major differences between this and the DC deck building game, not just from the beginning points in the setup, but throughout gameplay and some of the different things that happen throughout the game. We really enjoy it, and we hope you do too. Once again, my opponent is Mrs. Tox, so we'll see how I fare out this time. We think we agreed that because of a couple of play mistakes that I made in the DC deck building game, that she probably could have won that since it, was, since it was so close. So we'll see what happens this time out. We had put a poll up on Facebook and Twitter to ask who you'd like us to play, and Gandalf and Aragorn were the two most popular names that were thrown around, so Gandalf and Aragorn it is. Come with us, because one does not simply win a deck building game, as we play The Lord of the Rings, the deck building game from Cryptozoic. Alright, so here we are with the setup of The Lord of the Rings deck building game. And this is built on the Cerberus engine, which is the same engine that the DC deck building game is built on. You'll notice a lot of similarities, but I want to walk through the differences in setup first. There are corruption cards, which are very similar to weaknesses. They give you negative one victory points when you uh, have them in your deck at the end of the game. There are valor cards, which are always available to purchase, which cost you three power to acquire and provide you two power when you play them. And there is a stack of arch enemies, similar to the stack of supervillains in DC. However, the setup for these are different. In this game, there are different levels of arch enemies. You'll notice the Nazgul, which are on top, are say level one arch enemy. Then underneath them there are three randomized level two arch enemies. Underneath those there are three randomized level three arch enemies. And at the very bottom of the stack is Lurts. 
Lurtz is a big, bad Urukai who, if you've seen The Fellowship of the Ring or have read the book, is the main bad guy that they face at the end of their journey in that story. And in this, thematically connected, is the last arch enemy we'll face in this game. The Path, uh, which is uh, familiar from the DC deck building game as the lineup, there are five cards in the Path. You can acquire them at any time. They do not replenish unless a card tells you to do so. They'll replenish at the end of the turn. They do not replenish immediately. Um, and in addition, there is a key turn that you'll notice on this Urukai and other cards as we play them called Ambush, which is in red. Uh, most villains in the game will have an attack of some type, which similar to the DC game, when you play them from your hand, will attack your opponents. But the ambush in red will happen to the player whose turn it is next after that ambush comes out. So when you first put out the five cards from the path, ambushes don't count and don't matter. But from this point forward, if I end my turn and the next card that comes out is an ambush, that ambush is going to affect Mrs. Tox. If she ends her turn and the next card that comes out has an ambush, it's going to affect me. And yes, if somebody acquires more than one card and multiple ambushes come out, you have to deal with multiple ambushes. So there's a lot more tense moments in this game with ambushes potentially coming out, especially towards later in the game. Now I'm playing Gandalf and Mrs. Tox is playing Aragorn because uh, we put a vote up on Facebook and Twitter and those were the two most popular ones that people were talking about. But your starting deck is a little different as well. You have nine basic cards. You have three despairs, which provide you absolutely nothing but clog up your deck. You have six courages, which each provide you one power when played. And your hero will tell you which card that you start the game with in your deck. So for me, I get Gandalf's staff. For Aragorn, he gets Aragorn's sword. And those are special cards that go into the deck that will do something thematically connected to your character. But unlike DC where your, your hero and their card has a power, in this game you actually have a card inside of your deck that will keep coming back and doing things. So since we think that I cheated during the DC deck building game at a couple of points, um, and the game was so close, we're going to go ahead and let Mrs. Tox actually go first because we think that she may have won that game. We'll say miscalculated. Sure. All right. Um, I'm starting out with three courage. Hey, that could be the name of my mistress. You're <laughs> Mrs. Tox, and that could be miscalculated. That's a great villain name. <laughs> All right. I'm starting out with three courage, and I actually have Aragorn's sword. And it says, for each different cost among cards you play or have played this turn, plus one power. And then I have one to spare. So I have one, two, three, four. And I am going to acquire a Valor for three. Okay. All right. I have Gandalf's staff. His staff says plus one power, and I can destroy a card in the path. If I do, I replace it with the top card in the main deck, so it'll be replaced immediately and I get to ignore any ambush effects that that card may have. So, I am going to get rid of Elendil. So we'll destroy that card, and we'll bring out a new card. We get the Horn of Gondor. I have three courage and a despair, so I have four total power, and I will get an Urukai. Oh, you. Another Another Horn of Gondor. Another Horn of Gondor. This is a horny game. (laughs) Okay. Um, I have three courage and two to spare. So I have three power. I am actually going to get the Horn of Gondor. I think that would work really well with um, Aragorn's sword. Okay. I have three courage and two to spare, so I have three total, and I'm going to get a Horn of Gondor myself. All you. Five 
power and one to spare. I'm going to take Mary for three. And let's see, I had five, right? Three, four, five. And I will take the light of Arendelle for two. Okay. Now this is where it can get tense because now I have two cards coming out. And if any of them are ambushes, I have to deal with both of them. You shall not pass. And Book of Mazarbal. So uh, we have a kind of a house rule that uh, the card you shall not pass, you have to say it in your best Gandalf voice uh, if you acquire it. So we're going to get into some combat. I'm going to play an Urukai. Uh, he has plus two power and he says attack. Each other player chooses and discards a card. So you'll have to choose and discard a card. The ambush, which is in red, only happens when they come into the path. So it doesn't matter right now. I, I don't do anything with that at all. It just lets me get the power and the attack. And then three courage will give me a total of five. And I will actually get still sharp because it lets me draw a card and I can destroy a card in my hand or discard pile. This is one of the things a couple of people have mentioned from the DC deck building game being that, you know, the villains come back and attack. They do in this one as well. If you haven't seen the critical review that we did of this, my opinion on that is thematically it makes more sense in this game because these enemies that are in the main deck are uh, a lot of orcs, the Urukai, um, and the, the goblins, and it's the, you know, the endless hordes almost that they had to deal with throughout the movie. So thematically, it makes a little more sense. All right, I have one Courage, Aragorn's sword, and the Horn of Gondor. So mm. one, two, three, four. Correct. Okay, so I have four power. And I am going to acquire Sting. Okay. That's Sting the sword, not Sting the singer. <laughs> One does not simply walk into a deck building game. All right. I'll play two Courage, two Despair, and the Horn of Gondor. Um, so I have... One, two, three... Whopping power. So I will get Yushabot Pass. Very nice. Thank you. Not a lot of ambush is happening. We're getting lucky. Bite your tongue. Yeah, I know. It's about to come back and kick me in my butt. Which it usually does. Okay, I'm going to play Light of Arendelle, sure. and it says, name a non-starter card type and then reveal the top card of your deck. If it is named, plus four power, otherwise plus one. Just going to say the Horn of Gondor. <laughs> oh, yes! Cheater. Four. Non-starter. Um, Five. You'll notice on the Courages and the... Uh, despair. It says starter specifically. So. Okay, so I have four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh boy! What I are do? will take one. Does not simply walk into Mordor. Oh, oh, the Nazgul! I totally forgot about the Nazgul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Four, yeah, five, six, seven, eight. I have yeah. eight. I am going to defeat the Nazgul for okay. eight. Yeah, I was going to say. I was like, <laughs> that would have been kind of crazy. Okay, so very similar to um, DC, the uh, next arch enemy comes out. And they don't have necessarily a first appearance attack. They have something called a group ambush. Same type of thing. Uh, this one says each player reveals his hand. Each player who revealed one or more allies gains two corruptions. And this is Uler Ostea. Um, I don't have any way of stopping that. So I'm going to reveal my hand to have an Urukai, a Despair, two Courage, and Gandalf Staff. Uh, so I revealed no allies, so I don't gain any corruption. I, you, have, I have Mary. I have yeah. one ally, so Mary, I gain one yep. corruption. I'll put that in my discard pile. Okay. All right, so I am going to Urukai, so which is plus two power, and each other player discards a card. Okay, 
And then I will Gandalf's Staff, which is you may destroy a card in the path. If you do, replace it with the top card of the main deck. Ignore any ambush effects from that card. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of Recover Your Strength. And we will get Mirror of Galadriel. And then I have two more Courage and a Despair. So I have two, three, four, five. And I will get the Council of Elrond. So let me draw cards, which is my favorite mechanic. Ooh, Fortune. So this is one of the more fun things that I really like about the Lord of the Rings game uh, versus the DC game. And it's just a simple thing. These white cards, which are first stunning compared to all the other cards in the game, not to say the other cards aren't good, but just the white is really bright and it pops out. Fortunes, you'll notice, cost zero to um, purchase. And they all say at the very beginning of them that when you buy or gain this card, you can play it immediately and then destroy it. Now, fortunes are basically very limited. I think there's only six in the entire deck. But they're very impactful and they're supposed to represent the really good things that happen to the Fellowship of the Ring as they're fighting through all of these evils and bad guys and the whole nine yards. So when they come up, they're really cool because you can just take it and play it, which is pretty nice. All right, I'm going to take the gift. And Shocker. when you buy or gain this card, play it immediately. Um, reveal the top card of the main deck, gain it, and put it into your hand. Otherwise known as cheat. See, um, seeing stones. Seeing stones, okay. And that gets destroyed. Yep. All right. And yes, the picture looks like the Princess Bride, but no, it's not. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to play seeing stones, mm -hmm. which allows me to draw two cards, and then I put one back on top of my deck. But it does not have to be those one of those two, which is really nice. Um, I'm actually going to put... Seeing Stones works really well with a lot of the other artifacts that ask you to name something, kind of like, um, you know, the mirror that you did before. <laughs> um, play Mary, look at the top card of your deck, and I may discard it. Hmm, shocker. <laughs> um, Never expected see. that. Courage, I'm going to play Sting. The Horn of Gondor and Aragorn's Sword. Wow. So, let's see. Okay, so total power, I have two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Power. Right. I have ten power. Right. So I'm going to defeat this boss up here, or this villain, enemy. Right. Okay, and I have to deal with both the possibility of an ambush, which it isn't, and we both have to deal with the Cave Troll. All right. Cave Troll says each player reveals a random card from his or her hand. Destroy each revealed card that shares a cost with another revealed card. In a two-player game, this isn't that bad. In a multiplayer game, it's bad. Do I have any defenses? No, of course I don't have any defenses. So, each player reveals a random card from his or her hand. Oh, well, that's good. And destroy each revealed card that shares a cost with another revealed card. Nope. Good. So nobody gets destroyed, which is nice. All right. We will go ahead and play Still Sharp, so I get to draw a card, and I can destroy a card in my hand or discard pile, and destroy and spare. And then I will play the Horn of Gondor, and then three Courages. So I have four total power, and I will get the Mirror of Galadriel. I'm very big on defeating or destroying cards that are in my starting hands. Right, more orcs came out, so more, there's no ambush. More Moria orcs. So All right. Light of Arendil. Mm -hmm. Name a non-starter type. I'm going to say, oh, non-starter type. Um, We'll go with the Horn of Gondor again. No. no. Okay. So it is one power. And then that gives me three... And the attack. What's the attack? Choose another player. You may put a card from your discard pile into his discard pile. If he um, if he avoids this attack, destroy that card. 
I do not have a discard pile. Say that one more time. It says you may put a card from your discard pile into your... Okay, so the card you would choose is the one that gets destroyed, right? I remember that. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and defend against that with You Shall Not Pass. So I get to draw a card from You Shall Not Pass. Okay. You still get your three power, though. Yes. So three, four, five, six. And I will take one does not simply walk into Mordor. Okay. Frodo Baggins, the ring bearer. All right, I will play Gandalf Staff, and I will destroy a Moria Orc, and we will get the Even Star Pendant, and then I will play two Courages and a Horde of Gondor. So I get one, two, three, four. <sighs> Not being able to generate much power. I'm going to go ahead and get Frodo for four. That was awesome. Another fortune! Wow! Alright. Aragorn's very lucky today. When you buy or gain this card, play it immediately. Um, plus three power this turn. Alright, so that gives me three. Um, I'm going to play Mary, look at the top card of my deck, and I may discard it, and I am not. Cool. You may gain a card from the path with five or less. I will take the bulk. Okay. And then I have sting and two cards. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I will defeat the cave trolls for nine. I'm getting slaughtered. Yay. All right. Ah. <sighs> Okay, Ambush from the Twilight Ringwraith, and Boromir. Okay, so the Twilight Ringwraith says, Reveal your hand, discard each revealed card with a cost of exactly three. I have the Urukai, Mirror Galadriel, Courage and Despair, and Still Sharp. So the Mirror Galadriel gets gone, and then we get a new wicked, nasty... It's Moria Swarm. Group okay. Ambush is each player reveals his hand and discards all revealed artifacts. Oh, good. I have no artifacts. So I have good. two. All right. So they get discarded. Yep. All right. So um, I'll play Steel Sharp so I can draw a card, and I will destroy a Despair from my hand. I'll play an Urukai, get two power, and you have to discard a card. My hand is dwindling. And then... I have two more power, so I have a total of four power, uh, and I will get a Valor. I have two power, huh. therefore I am done. Okay. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing to get. Excitement abound. It's because you're tired and drawn out after a long squawk, I'm sure. <laughs> or defeating, defeating all the villains. Defeating those, those arch enemies. Or... Yeah. All right. Council Parker. of Elrond, I will draw two cards. Uh, you shall not pass. I shall draw another card. Wow. One, two, three, four, five courages. And one despair. Uh, with my five, I will... Um... I will get the Twilight Ring Race. Alright. All you. This better be a much better hand considering all those things are gone. Yep. Okay, I'm going to play Seeing Stone so I get to draw two cards. Mm -hmm. And then I get to put a card back. Um, wow, okay, so I have two, three, four, so I will play, I will get another Valor. Okay. All right, let's see here. Still sharp, I'm going to draw a card, and I can destroy a card in my hand or my discard pile. I will destroy the spare. Two. 
We'll do Mirror of Galadriel. Look at the top card of your deck. You may destroy it. I will not. Gandalf's Staff, and we'll destroy a Moria Orc, and we'll bring out Strider, Frodo, uh, and a Courage. So I have two, three, four, five, six, seven total. The Mithril Vest, gain the top card of the main deck. You may put it on top of your deck, and a defense. Pretty good. Two even star pendants, which could give me plus eight power. Strider or Baromir would work really good with Frodo. However, I think I'm going to go for the Mithril Vest. It's really good. Mm -hmm. The brooch. Okay. Light of Arendelle. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, um, it says name a non starter card type. I'm going to say artifact. It is, in fact, an artifact. Okay. Um, so I get four. Um, five, six, seven. Um, and it says I can put a discard. The attack is I get to put a card from my discard pile into yours. If you avoid it, the card gets destroyed. Can't avoid it. So I'm going to give you my corruption. Yay. And then, so that is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Aragorn sword, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. And then I have one to spare. So mm -hmm. we're going to defeat the Moria Swarm for eight. And then we will take... Um, the Elven Brooch. Well, this should answer everyone's questions on in the Cerberus engine, can there be a runaway victory? Yes. <laughs> Isengard has a location. Very good. Okay. Um, and then a new arch enemy, Ular Kintea. Ular Kintea says each player destroys the highest cost card in his discard pile or discards three cards. Well, I'll do that, because the highest cost card in my discard pile is a Corruption, which is kind of nice. Actually, these go away. They don't go back in the stack. Destroys the highest cost card? Highest cost card in their discard pile or discards three cards. I think I might just have to discard three cards. Um, I'll discard three cards. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and do Urukai. Make you discard another card. Okay. Uh, the Twilight Ring Wraith says put up two enemy cards, each with cost three or less from your discard pile into your hand, which would normally be great, but I don't have a discard pile, so it doesn't do anything. Um, but it does give me two power. Valor, a Courage, and a Horn of Gondor. The Horn of Gondor gives me for each different non-starter card type. So I have an artifact, a maneuver, and an enemy. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I will defeat Ulair Kintea. Yay. Alright, so our next um, arc enemy is Saruman. And this the group ambush, this ambush cannot be avoided. So each player simultaneously chooses and reveals a card from his hand. And I only have one. Each player who revealed the lowest cost card. Gains three corruptions. Each player who revealed the highest card destroys it. I don't have much of a choice here. Okay, so, so you just wow, that's the Nazgul. Yeah. So you destroy the Nazgul. And I gain three corruptions. Oh, that's bad. Somewhat helps me, but I still lose points. So. <coughs> All right. Was it discard or was it? Just reveal. It was reveal, not discard. Okay. Uh, and it's your turn. It's not my turn. It's your turn. I have no cards. Okay. It's your turn. My then. turn. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Council of Elrond will draw two cards. Still Sharp will draw a card and destroy a card in our discard pile. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Mirror of Galadriel. Look at the top card of your deck. You may destroy it. I will not. Um, Gandalf's. Staff. I'm sick of these even star pendants. I'm going to destroy one and then bring out the Moria Orcs. And then four Courage. So four, five, six. And I will get Boromir. Because 
one's not simply win a deck building game when your wife is kicking your butt. Mm. I don't know, I lost my one. You're one of your 50 arch enemies that you've defeated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to play with the book. It says draw a card. Draw a card. It was actually a net positive for you because I believe the Nazgul is worth four points. Yeah. And you gave you me a negative three, three, so yeah. Okay, so I drew my card, and then it says, then reveal the top card of the main deck. If it costs five or more, gain it and put it on top of your deck. Well, look at that. It costs five. <laughs> so it goes on the top of my deck. Mm-hmm. Um, um, then I'm going to play Mary. Look at the top card of your deck. No, I'm not going to discard it. Cave Troll and Two Courage. So I have two... Six, seven, eight. Okay. I will take Strider for six. Okay. Hey, Yay. I get a fortune. Congratulations. All right. Um, it doesn't help me. Unbelievable. That's ridiculous. I'm getting my butt kicked. Um, do you still have to get? Do you still have to take it? Well, you know it's fine. No, I don't have to take it, um, but it won't help you either because it says put a card from your discard pile into your hand. Oh, yeah. Just kind of funny. <laughs> um, all right, you shall not pass. Draw a card. Boromir plus four power. Frodo plus two power. If you play or have played another ally this turn, you may destroy a card in your hand or discard pile. I'll destroy a courage. Then we'll play the Mithril Vest. Gain the top card of the main deck, and you may put it on top of your deck. So I will do that, and I will put it on top of my deck. And uh, then the Horn of Gondor. So um, I have an ally, an artifact, and maneuver. So I have three, four, five, and four is nine. Not enough to defeat Sauron. I'm going to get Isengard and Frodo. And, hang on, um, and now I will acquire Eagle's Escape. Brilliant. Destroy it, and then get a card back in my hand, Isengard, and put it into play. Which says, on each of your turns you may choose and destroy a card in your hand. Well played. Thank you. Well played. Alright, no wings. Captain my king. First ambush. Choose and discard two cards. All right. Yeah, don't, don't tempt, tempt me for it. Don't tempt me for it. Okay. Seeing stones, I get to draw two cards and then put one back on top of my deck. Get that one. Okay. So then I'm going to play a Valor. I'm going to play the Mines of Moria, which is a location. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to play my enemy, and it says the first time you play an enemy on each of your turns, draw a card. So I'm going to draw a card. What's the attack again from Osteo? Um, you may put a card from your discard pile into into his discard pile. Mm -hmm. So, okay. have my despair. Thank you. And then I'm going to play the Elven Brooch. So, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm going to take the Evil Star Pendant for six. Okay. And then I will. Sorry, that. you only had six. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Getting now who's cheating? I know. I'm, get, I'm getting power happy. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Moria orcs. Okay. Things add up differently in my head. I guess. <laughs> Black Riders. Each other player discards a random card. A oh, random. Random. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you pick. That one. Okay. Um, uh, Ulair Kantea gives me plus three power. You may discard any number of zero cost cards from your hand and then draw that many cards. I'm going to discard a corruption and a courage. Uh, actually, no, I'm just going to discard a courage. 
and I'm going to draw. And there's a reason for that, because I'm going to use my Isengard to destroy a card in my hand. Then I will do Gandalf's Staff, and we'll get rid of one of the Moria Orcs. And we'll bring out... It comes in bites. And a Valor. So three, six, seven, eight, nine. So... Saruman remains elusive. Yeah, Saruman's hard to defeat. Um... I will get, it comes in pints for four, and don't tempt me, Frodo, for three, so that is seven, nine, nine, I, well, I actually get the Urkai Scout, yeah, there we go, nine, that'll work. Gosh. Discard two random cards. The tides are turning. Prancing Pony. And my captain, my king. Okay. Um, Cave Troll 4. I get to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Cards. So I have 5. Not bad. Considering how it's starting. Yeah. And you'll notice that this gets really big in this game. A lot more cards get destroyed in this game than in uh, the DC deck building game. I'm going to take the Prancing Pony. Okay. For 4. Alright. Yep. Alright. You Alright, I'm gonna use my Isengard to destroy part of my hand. Corruption. I'm gonna play the Twilight Ring Wraith. Uh, plus two power, and I can put up to two enemy cards, each with a cost of three or less, from my discard pile into my hand. So the Urukai Scout. And the Urukai Scout. So I'll play the Urukai Scout, so that gives me four. I'll play the Urukai, you have to choose and discard a card. And then two cards. Two, four, six, seven, eight. And with seven, I will get the ring wraiths. Because they're awesome. Gimli. Son of Gloriam. Okay, I'm gonna play Mary. Plus two, and I get to look at the top card of my deck, and you may destroy it. I am or discard it. I am not. Um, Light of Arendelle, name a non-starter type. I'm going to say enemy. Shocker! Oh, look. <laughs> look how um, that worked. Oh, I don't get it, um, but I get, get I get the four power. Right. So four, five, six, seven, and Aragorn's sword. So it's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Um, oh, sorry, I'm still out of reach. Still out of reach. <laughs> so I have ten. I'm going to take Gimli. Of course you are. Um, I'm going to do the orcs for seven. Or for three, so that's seven. Um, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Nice, fortune. Oh, like a loss and uh, ambush. Choose and discard two cards. Okay. Uh, two courages. Gone bye bye. Still sharp. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do Council of Elrond, which lets me draw two cards. So I will shuffle. And you notice the back of these say Middle Earth. They don't necessarily say the Fellowship of the Ring. And uh, that leads us, of course, to believe that there will be the other movies. Two Towers and Return of the King, possibly. Uh, four more cards, which would be fun. Let's draw two cards. Still sharp. Draw a card. I can discard uh, or destroy a card in my hand or discard pile. I'll destroy my Courage. Uh, Mirror of Galadriel, look at the top card of your deck and you may destroy it. I will not. Uh, Ulair, which would let me get cards from my discard pile, but I don't have any. And uh, you shall not pass. I will draw a card. 
And Black Riders. Each other player discards a random card. Yeah, you have a good hand, too. Do you? Yeah. Mm, it's going to be 20% less good. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want me to pick that time, huh? <laughs> Three, six, seven. Uh, oh, you know what? I also have the fortune. I forgot about the fortune. I can do that and draw two cards from it. And then I can actually... Uh, okay. Uh, it comes in pints. Uh, choose plus two power. Choose a player. Each player other than the chosen one draws a card. I'll choose you and draw a card. <laughs> uh, with, uh, let's see, Frodo. I'll get plus two. I haven't played another ally, so that doesn't kick in. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. 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 With courage. Saruman is defeated. That Final. took a while. That did take a while. <laughs> There's ambushes of what's been hurting. Alright, another Horn of Gondor. He's hard to deal with. And the next enemy. You can get it. <laughs> the Balrog! Each player discards the top card of his deck. Each player who discarded the highest cost card discards from his hand equal to the card's cost. Oh, Oof. zero! Discard good. All right. I have an Urukai that costs four as well, so he's gone. And that's it. Alright. Okay, the book, draw a card. Um, then reveal the top card of the main deck. If it costs five or more, it does not gain it and put it on your deck, so it stays there. Yep. Um, then I'm going to play Moria Swarm. Because it's my enemy, I get to, to draw a card. So I have to shuffle my discard pile real quick. And you may ask um, from the levels of the arch enemies if those matter. There are some cards in the game that will uh, give you power uh, equal to the level of the arch enemy that you could fight. So that does come into play as well. Okay. One does not simply walk into Mordor. One does plus not. three, but draw a card for each location. Mm-hmm. Okay. Elven Brooch, Sting, and then I have a Courage, and then I'm going to play the Horn of Gondor. So for each card type, I have one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So this is three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Hmm. And just that quickly, the Balrog is gone. <laughs> All right. So that's ten. And I will take Scout for two. Gee, I wonder who's next. <laughs> All right. So, Pippin and Lurts. Each player names a cost, then reveals a random card from his hand. Unless the named cost is revealed, that player discards his whole hand. Oh, I got a 50-50 shot. I'm saying zero. I'm saying zero as well. Boom. Yes! Yes! All right. Suck it, lurks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, ring race, plus three power, and each other player gains a corruption. So you gain a corruption unless you can defend against it, because it is an attack. Um, no, I cannot. Okay. Uh, Gandalf's staff, and I will get rid of the Horn of Gondor. And get Sting. Valor and Despair will get destroyed because of my Isengard. So I have three, four, five, six. I'll get Legolas. That's all you. Another mirror. All right, I'm going to play Mary. Look at the top card of your deck. Mm -hmm. And I am going to discard it. <coughs> my captain, my king, choose another player, and you and that player may each destroy a card in your hand and or destroy a card in your hand or discard pile. Okay. So I am going to. Destroy a corruption. I'll destroy a courage. 
Okay, and then I have two courage and air arm sword. So I have played one, two, three. Oh no, sorry, that's the one that does cost, not the right. one so that does type. Sorry. This would be two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. And lurch, by the way, is fourteen. Yeah. He's hard. <laughs> And these are the easy arch enemies. There's an entire set of impossible mode arch enemies who are really, 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 really hard. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take another Sting and Pippin. Yep. To give you an idea of the comparison, so Lurtz, his group ambush says uh, what we just did before, you name a cost, and then unless it's revealed, you discard your hand. The uh, impossible mode Lurtz says ongoing at the start of each player's turn destroy the top card of the main deck and when the main deck is empty the fellowship is defeated and his group ambush says each player who avoids this ambush discards his hand each player guesses whether the cost of the top card of their deck is even or odd and then destroys it each player who guessed right discards his hand each player who guessed wrong is out of the game so Quite a bit harder, quite a bit more challenging, but super, super fun. Ah, ambush. Gain a corruption. I have no way of stopping it, so I'll gain a corruption. And no ambush. Okay. I've already looked through my discard pile, so it's not going to help me. So the Twilight Ring Wraith is plus two. The Mithril Vest. Gain the top card of the main deck. You may put it on top of your deck. I will do that. Uh, and I'll go ahead live. I'll get another Urukai. Okay, I'm kind of excited this turn. Mm hmm. Seeing stones. Uh oh. Draw two cards. Mm hmm. And then I get to put one back on top of my deck. I'm keep that one. Okay. I'm going to do the Ethan Star Pendant. Name mm -hmm. a non starter type. I'm going to say Maneuver. Maneuver. Oh, look. It's a maneuver. It's a maneuver. So I get eight. Mm -hmm. um, Light of Arendelle, name mm -hmm. a non starter. I'm going to say maneuver. <gasps> it's a maneuver. Wow. So there's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. Almost um, like those elves planned it. <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, and I get attacked. And you get attacked. Um, Oh, you get something from my discard pile into yours. So oh, what a shame. You get a courage. How's that? Yay. You so, do give me courage. Mm -hmm. What did I end up with? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm going to defeat Lurts for 14. Mm -hmm. uh, good call. It's not going to really matter because it's the end of the game, call. but I mean, I'll give you an extra point. All right, that is the end of the game, which is wonderful because I was going to defeat Lurtz if you didn't. So we will count up our cards and we'll be back after this interlude to tell you who won. We're back. <laughs> um, as you can see by uh, how quickly I counted my deck and how long it took Mrs. Tox to count her deck, uh, this was pretty much an utter um, Minds of Moria butt kicking. Uh, Mrs. Tox had 73, uh -huh. and I did not have 73. <laughs> um, I had 40. So I was pretty much crushed in that game. Um, but we hope that you liked it. Uh, we really do enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot different feel from the DC deck building game. Uh, I really personally really like the fortunes. I really like the setup of the arch enemies. Uh, it just feels a little bit more thematically connected. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've played this quite a bit. Uh, and as you can tell, one of us is very good at it and one of us is not. Um, but we do have a lot of fun. Uh, we've played this with a uh, full five people a lot, and it is just as much fun, if not more fun, with five people. 
Um, but it plays well with two like you just saw, and it goes all the way up to five. Um, this one is not out on the shelves yet, but I believe it's coming pretty darn soon. Um, so we hope you like this. Let us know what you think. Feel free to leave your comments, uh, of course, below in the YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, Plus by searching Crits Happen, or for the guy who can't play the Lord of the Rings deck building game and beat his wife. Uh, and of course, you can always find us on CritsHappen.com. So until we see you next time, we hope you enjoy this critical play. Thanks so much for watching. Keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits.